Hi, in this clip I'll show you how to quickly develop a mobile app with Magic XPA. Developing for mobile devices with Magic XPA uses the same Magic development methodology that you're already familiar with. Magic has added some great features to make it even easier to develop mobile apps. So let's see how it works. We'll start with a simple logon program. First we'll start by activating the mobile design mode by clicking this toggle icon or by opening the options menu and selecting mobile design mode. This mode presets the form designer with certain default values that are more common for mobile devices. So we'll create a program named log on and give it a public name. Let's say start and select the external checkbox. Now this is a RIA program. So in the task properties, we'll set the task type to rich client. Click OK. Now we're going to add two virtual variables. The first one will be for the username and we'll set it to alpha with a length of 10. And a second variable we'll call password and that will also be alpha and 10. Now we'll zoom into the form designer. And since the form designer is in mobile design mode, you can see that the screen size is smaller. This is because it's recommended to design a screen and its controls for the smallest device and then use placement to increase the size of the controls for larger devices. Now I'll drop the two variables onto the form. And you might notice that the default height of the controls is larger in the mobile design mode. So that's one of the defaults that it sets for you. Now in the toolbar, I'll click here on this mobile form preview button. And this gives you a preview of the display forms that you are developing. This lets you play around with the placement and size of the controls and see how the controls will appear on various mobile devices. In this pane, you can select which mobile device you want to preview, such as iPhone 6. And next to the name, you'll see the dimensions of the device. You can also change the orientation of the device and change the zoom level. Now you can add your own devices by going to the options, settings, and mobile devices. And whatever is defined here is saved in the Magic INI's file. So let's go back to the form designer. And now we'll deal with the placement that we mentioned earlier. I'm going to mark here both edit controls and search for placement. And in the placement property, you set up whether the control is moved or resized when the parent form or parent container is resized. And here you'll see four placement values, X, Y, width and height. And when the X is zero and the width is 100, like here, the controls will increase when the form width is increased. And this is the behavior I want, so I'll leave this as is. Now let's add a button control to the form. Now I want it to be in the center, so I'm going to click here, center horizontally. But you can see here in the preview pane that it's not in the center. So if I want to make sure that it always appears in the center, I'll go here again to the placement property and I'll set the X to 50. And now you can see here that it's in the center. And we'll even switch between devices or orientation and you can see that it still remains in the center because of the placement that I just put on. Here it is in the center. Now when using colors for mobile devices, it's important to remember that mobile devices do not support the Windows system colors this means that whenever you use a system color on a control, the appearance of the control will be native and defined by the operating system. If you want to have full control over the appearance of the control, you need a non-system color. To create a non-system color, we'll zoom here from the color property and we'll click create. And we'll zoom from the foreground column and we'll select green. Now we'll leave this system drop down 
list empty, and that's what defines it as non-system. And the background color should also be non-system. Since we see here an ARGB value, as opposed to the text here above, we know this is a non-system color. So I'll leave this as is. And I'll click Select. And you see here in the preview a different appearance for the edit control, since it's a non-system color. And let's bring it back to the original color. The project is now ready to be executed on your mobile device. Now when using Android devices or simulator, Magic gives you this very handy icon for running the application directly on the device. Now once it's toggled on, running the application or the program by F7 will already install the pre-built magicdev.apk file on your device or simulator and will run the program or project. So I'll press F7. You can see now the screen of the real device and you can see that the magic application has started and the program is executed. Notice that the controls and button are properly positioned and when rotating the device to landscape you can also see that the button was positioned in the center like we saw earlier in the preview pane. Once we'll close the application on the device then the studio will go back into development mode. Of course, you can also use your own customized application, and for information about this, have a look at the Developing Mobile Applications concept paper, which is also available as a PDF with the Magic installation. You'll find information about customizing your application in the Customizing Your Application topic. Now, there are some prerequisites for executing your mobile device, and you can find them all listed in the Mobile Development Environment topic. For executing on Android, have a look at the execution on Android topic. And when using iOS, you need to create your own application package and install it on the device. And you can find that information in the customizing your iOS application topic. So that's our quick introduction to developing a mobile app using Magic XPA. Thanks and join us again soon for some more magic.